Welcome to the new series. So, since this is all about learning, what I want to start out with is how do you learn anything? How do you learn anything is a big ask because, I mean, that'll be like cleaning your bathroom to quantum physics and there's a bit of a level in between, right? But let's try anyways. I have a deep fascination with learning. I love learning new stuff. I love diving deep into new things. I like to teach stuff and therefore gain deeper insights into topics, as you see. If you want to learn machine learning, then you have to understand the theory, but you do have to do the application as well. If you do not apply your knowledge, it's basically worthless. The biggest problem when you're trying to learn anything is that you don't know what you don't know. When we want to learn something, we have to find a source that tells us what we learn or how we can learn it. We need some kind of curriculum. And that's why universities are so popular. Universities give you a set curriculum that lines out everything you need to do to get a degree, to become a scientist, to become a teacher. And once you're done with this, you should know everything in between. Realistically, we don't, but of course, we, we have an idea of all the things that we should have learned along the way and it gets much easier to get back to this point and dig in, oh yeah, that thing. And it's like, if you've seen it once, you can place everything in the right context. However, university is, I mean, a degree is three years and that's a lot of time. So when people are trying to get into machine learning, like we are in this series, that means um, there are people with PhDs that are going back to university and do a one year, two year degree. And in the UK at least, you have to pay for that. And on the one hand, it's a time investment. On the other hand, it's also a monetary investment. You get a general overview, but universities are notorious for not giving you practical experience. Practical experience is what makes you great at a skill. So I can practice Duolingo for Spanish as much as I want. If I don't speak Spanish at some point, I, I hit a wall. I can only go so far by doing theoretical exercises. I have to apply my knowledge to actually get better at a skill and to see where the theory actually breaks down. I'm not the best reader, so I rarely ever touch books, to be honest. A lot of people love them, they condense information quite well, but with the internet these days, I can well, Google for anything and find an equally reliable source or find the book itself and then get an online copy of it. So, don't start with a book. And then there's YouTube. There's a lot of YouTube channels out there and I mean, you're watching this on YouTube, which um, which gives you information, which tell you how it is, and sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less entertaining, but it's lecture style, right? You take it in, and you think, oh yes, I understand this very well. But usually, it's not enough. So, if you get inspired by a YouTube video, then you have to follow this up with actually implementing any of these um, any of these topics because you only heard about this skill but you haven't done anything to engage with this skill. I have three steps to learn any kind of skill. The first step is to deconstruct what you have to do to learn this thing. Go into university courses and look up what kind of knowledge, what of kind of courses they're doing. Make a list of it. Have a look at online MOOCs, something like that. If you're, if you're trying to learn any skill, there is information out there what the skill is actually in its nitty-gritty details. And you have to understand the details to understand the actual skill. So machine learning is made of math, is made of, so not just math, but specifically you have to know linear algebra, you have to know calculus, you have to know statistics. If you know, you have to know at least parts of these skills 
you will be able to dive deeper into those skills so you actually understand what you're doing. As someone that is learning a new skill, you don't know what you don't know. So, say you want to learn physics. You don't know what parts of physics there are. You don't know what math you need for these kind of things. Like if you're going into high energy physics, you definitely need to know statistics. If you are going into geophysics like myself, you definitely need to know about waves and about signal theory. So really, you don't know what you don't know until you know what you don't know. The last point is immersion. You have to you have to immerse yourself in the topic. So that can have varying degrees, of course. So um, one YouTuber I really like, Nathaniel Drew, just moved to Italy to learn Italian. That's quite extreme. Not a lot of people can do that. First of all, you have to have the right passport, but second of all, you also have to have the time and the flexibility. A lot of people uh, watching this YouTube have children, are trying to learn something on the side, or yeah, maybe aren't as free to travel somewhere. So learning a language is just language courses. But you can do these as language courses, you can do these then in groups, you can seek out um, magazines that are written in that language to read it, you can join online forums, you can switch your phone into that language. Those are all ways to immerse yourself for language learning. If you're going to a more abstract skill like machine learning, Go into it and try to find a project that is important to you. So maybe you are really into sports. Do an analysis of sports. Like, how are your teams, uh, how is your team performing? Can you predict the goal difference for the next uh, game they will be playing? Find a, find a project that you find interesting. It can be as whimsical as you want, but it has to be something that you know a little bit about that you invested in and then combine that with a with a skill so if you're doing machine learning maybe you like con collecting coins so you build a machine learning system where you can give it a an image of your coin and it'll tell you all the facts about that coin what you, what year is it from why is it worth collecting this coin what's interesting about the region and that year that it was made you know you can always spin it further and you can always build that project to create to create something really cool and when you're interested in something you you will go one step further to make it even better to make it even cooler and learning that way you will you will have the you have, you'll have the capability of building something great and learning something with it. And then if you show it to others, they will be intrigued as well. So you can actually explain what you've been doing. So this is, uh, this is how projects are immersive. You basically build something that is so cool that you're thinking about it more than you probably should. Even if you have a full-time job, take a half hour out of your day maybe take the the evening on a weekend to learn this new skill and to build a project that you find really interesting this is one of the reasons why i like hackathons so much it gives you a full weekend where you can fully immerse yourself in a new topic and learn something and build something great to try to impress all the others at that hackathon and that's how i learned a lot about machine learning and about programming so just to recap, the first thing you have to do, deconstruct. The second part, seek weakness. Find the points where you're really crap at and improve them relentlessly. last part immerse yourself find the space where you can learn this thing the most effective because you have to do something about it every day if you can by using these three three skills deconstructing seeking out weak points and immersing yourself 
means that you will be able to learn pretty much anything that you set yourself out to. It won't be instant, it will not be easy, but learning new things never is. So if you want to learn with me, if you want to dive deep into machine learning for science, then definitely make sure to subscribe down below. Leave me a comment what you want to learn. I know it can be it can be overwhelming. I mean, I, I'm in that situation myself right now doing video. I'm looking forward to see you in the next videos. I hope I can give you some interesting insights and some concrete methods to work with. And I'll see you in the next video. The biggest problem about the biggest problem 